Hi. I'm Diana Montford, the world's first. Ooh, yes, the first. Transgender television journalist. Check. Look on YouTube. What is karma? There's a non sequitur. What is karma? Well, karma is whatever you think it is and whatever you make of it. My guest is Ms. Sylvia Chapel, who is a past life regressionist, an Akashic Records expert, and a karma maven. And she's <laughs> going to tell us all about it. And sh you are, aren't you? I am. Oh, good. So now, what exactly is karma? Karma is, um, well, can we back up a little bit and talk about um, the Akashic Records? Yes, and what is an Akashic Records? And I wanted to say that just because car what is karma is a question that I ask the Akashic Record Keepers. And who are, are beings much more advanced than we are yes. in uh, a galaxy <laughs> well, no, yes. in, in, in the 11th in the, dimension. The 11th dimension of Earth. And the Akashic Records, the word Akashic comes from the Hindu, the mm -hmm. Easter, Eastern traditions, um, where there is this, the understanding of reincarnation. And it is the library, if you will, of every soul's book of life. And in it are all is the in the record of every thought, deed, action, lifetime, um, and your probable future lifetimes. Um, and it's all there. It's kept by beings called the record keepers, and they are living beings who carry the records uh, within their own being, within their own. They don't mm -hmm. really have bodies except Not out of energy. Not unlike four fifty one where people live in the forest and each person knows a book and can recite yes. it at will. Yes, yes. And they are, they, um, they work with those of us who've been trained to access the Akashic Records. Mm -hmm. And I was trained by Maureen St. Germain, whose approach is, um, is one that helps us get beyond the world of duality, where in, in the third dimension where we find ourselves, where everything is right or wrong or good or bad. Or male or female. Or male or female. Everything has to be one or the other. And takes us, allows us to take uh, an approach <coughs> that is, that avoids all those prejudices that, and, and all of that dualistic thinking. So that we have a pure, we're getting information from a point that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yes. We're getting information from the record keepers, who are very helpful and supportive. Mm -hmm. They really wish to. They wish for us to use and access the information for the right reason, which is to help souls in their incarnation to make enlightened and loving choices, happy choices, as opposed to some of the flat-out miserable choices that we that we often make. What's an example of a lives. happy choice? Versus, well, here's the duality again, versus an unhappy choice. Well, and that brings us back to karma, too. Um, a happy choice is, I'm going to do something nice for someone. An unhappy choice is, someone insulted me, I'm going to shoot the mother. That's an unhappy like that. choice. Yes, exactly. Or to blame oneself. And one of the things that I find in when I'm doing past life regression or Akashic Records readings is that... Um, information will come through about a past life where a person feels like <coughs> they, they, just, they just screwed up in some way. They feel like they did something wrong. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a case in point could be someone who feels like uh, they let their family, they, he, let, you know, he let his family down. Um, and I can give you a little more information about this particular example. But, but karma in general, what karma is Karma in general. Well, what the record keepers say is that there's a misunderstanding of karma mm -hmm. in, our, in our culture and in, in other cultures where there's a sense that we are being judged by someone outside of us. The stern, you know, the voice of God saying, you messed up, you did something wrong in this lifetime, therefore you have to suffer the same thing. It's kind of the eye for an eye, tooth mm -hmm. for a tooth thing. Yes. And they're saying it's really not like that at all. Um, there's a certain law in this realm of duality of cause and effect. So what we set in motion, we as free will beings, what we s the choices that we make have consequences. And those consequences are going to come back to us 
just because that's the way that this realm is set up. Is it a case of I shoot you today, you shoot me 500 years from now? Well, that would be an example of a negative choice, mm -hmm. a choice that would probably not get you the result that you want. Because um, I shoot you today, 500 years from now, you forgive me and move on. Yes. That's a good... That's the loving choice. Mm -hmm. That's the compassionate choice. And that's the choice that helps you as a soul move in your advancement, just move back towards the light. Because our souls are perfect. Our souls, uh, you know, it's almost like they never left God. Uh, yet we've taken on as we become involved in the third dimensional realm, in matter, in the earth. Um, we've taken on a lot of, um, what's the right word? I, w I would say karma, except it's more like the consequences of our choices. We, got, we have a lot of baggage at times. But again, we have a very third dimensional earthbound concept of karma, yes. which is not the way more advanced souls define karma. It is that we are hidebound by the rules and principles and scientific facts of this plane of existence. But we yes. are, it is in fact not what we think it is with uh, a very paternalistic stern figure saying Yes, yes, and it's, it's a very good point that um, the view of karma from the 11th dimension is that there's, you know, from their point of view of the record keepers, there's no right or wrong, there's no good or bad choice. It's all in what the person, how the person responds to it, what you learn from it, what you take away from it. In other words, if you murder five people at once, but then you decide, I'm really sorry I did that, and I will never do that again. And 100 years later, your conscience is objector during a war. That might be the kind yes. of progression we're discussing. Yes, yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And what the other thing, the reason that the record keepers say that, that um, it's a misunderstanding is that what, what they tell me constantly is that um, Humans, those of us incarnate here, often judge ourselves very harshly. We're the ones judging ourselves. We're the ones saying, I did something really wrong. I feel very guilty. Uh, I'm to blame. Or you get attached to somebody else being to blame, as opposed to taking responsibility for the fact that you can make a different choice, mm -hmm. just like your example mm -hmm. of choosing forgiveness or compassion. A lot of times what they say is that uh, they will provide information about the lifetime where you think that you did something terribly wrong or you misused uh, your abilities or your wealth or whatever it is, um, or you brought suffering to someone. And they will give the actual record of what happened, the choices that were made mm -hmm. and why they were made, and sometimes you know, as I'm giving this information, it's, I, I totally understand why the person made that choice. You know, they but may the have person does not. And the person, and in finding out and having that awareness, um, the reason the record keepers would say, would share something like this, is that the person thinks that has internalized the idea that they, mm -hmm. that they did something wrong and deserve to suffer and deserve to be punished and have brought that into this lifetime, and there's some suffering involved. Mm -hmm. And you saw that yourself in the reading that I did for you, and you yes. were able to release the residue of it. Yes, yes. The residue of it. Well, uh, uh, yes, without going into detail, because it's a long, elaborate story, uh, a lover in a previous life stabbed me, and in this life I just forgave and forgot and moved on. Mm -hmm. But also, I sure as hell am not going to jail for him, so I'm not going to stab him, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. Well, you worked out the issues that, that yes, led we to did. that. We did. The we you know, we yes. smoothed it over and made up and... You made better choices in this life, I think, uh, from... Yes. Although, he's the one who stabbed me. I, I mean, let's remember that. I didn't stab him. But, okay. Um, this is after he tried to poison me, and that failed. 
I can sure pick them, can't I? God. <laughs> this was, however, 2,000 years ago, so we won't even discuss yeah, the life when I was Jean Harlow, no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yes. Uh, but back to karma. Yes. So that right now what the record keepers say is that that understanding of karma as punishment or retribution mm -hmm. no longer exists. Well, Edgar Cayce said you're meaning yourself. Yes. And that exactly. is basically what you've just said. Yes. You feel you've done wrong, therefore you feel you must pay in kind for what you perceive to be something bad. It doesn't yes. necessarily mean that it is innately bad or that you did something wrong. It's just that in your mindset, according to your moral code, you did something wrong. Now, that could mean anything. I mean, that could be a Muslim eating pork. And that would be a heinous crime and sin. But, you know, it's really not all that terrible, mm. you know. To us, it's certainly yes, not. Yes, or, uh, you know, whatever. Or a young girl losing her virginity before marriage, which in our lifetime was an outrageous disgrace. And today, marriage, what's marriage, you know? Yes, it's, so it's, there you go. it's changed quite a lot. Um, definitely changed. The other aspect of karma that the record keepers mentioned have mentioned quite often is that um, what does exist instead of that older view of karma is um, more of an instantaneous effect that in this lifetime that if you the consequences of your choice are often going to uh, they use the word snap back they're going to just smack you in the is face. Is there a reason why karma is no longer taking hundreds, even thousands of years? Uh, good question. And it has to do with the evolution of human consciousness. And the record keepers, uh, I did tune in actually earlier today and ask them the question mm -hmm. about the evolution of human consciousness. And they said that they, from their point of view, they saw that there had been great advancement in human consciousness. And that means that uh, humans are, we are, we are understanding who we really are. We're beings of love, life, well, sure, and compassion. Well, sure, just 50 years ago. I mean, if you discuss this, they would think you're crazy. You're insane. Yeah. You know? Well, yes, in our and, society. And 200 years ago, Samuel Pepys wrote in his diary that he, he saw a judge being flayed alive, and then he went off and had oysters. I mean, and this was just normal. You know, this was... Uh, Didn't even turn his appetite. Right, right. exactly. Right. So we have evolved. We have, it, we have evolved, and that's the reason that um, karma has changed, or the nature of that has changed. And so we, if we, the actions that we put into, pl into motion mm -hmm. are going to come back. I mean, you'll s and it's important for that to happen because it's time for us to clear off all this baggage. Is the earth going to survive? Is this why karma is snapping back? Because perhaps there won't be an earth in 100 years? My sense and the information I've gotten is that um, the Earth will survive and the Earth is actually moving the whole planet and everyone on it um, is moving to a higher level of consciousness. Does that mean that future generations will be more evolved souls coming to the Earth as opposed to more hostile, warlike, shallow souls? Yes. Yes, and able to make more loving choices, and more importantly, able to understand that we're all one. Mm -hmm. And that this realm of duality, um, we are actually creating our own lives, our mm -hmm. own existence yes. and experiences. And we're creating it, um, this is probably sounding outrageous to a lot of you, but we're creating it with our conscious mind and our subconscious mind, all mm -hmm. of our thoughts. And we're probably aware of what we consciously want to happen and want to create. However, that's the tip of the iceberg. There's this whole unconscious or subconscious that's sending out um, thought energy and shaping our future. And often we're sending out, at best, mixed messages. Mm -hmm. For example, relationships. I can say, I want to attract my beloved. Um, that's what I consciously want. Why isn't he here? Th and so forth. Um, Why isn't he? That's a good question. I think subconsciously I've been sending out a message of maybe fear of being in a close relationship. Because you're afraid of being hurt? Something along that lines, yes. Yeah. 
Um, I think a lot of us feel that. I think we have, yeah. yes. Sure. Sure, fear of intimacy and pain mm -hmm. and being made a fool of another. Mm -hmm. Sad and terrible things. Yeah. But that seems to be pretty widespread today, wouldn't you say? It is widespread, but also the, the awakening to the fact that we really are one and people beginning to accept, uh, accept responsibility for their own lives, mm -hmm. what they've created in their own lives. And if it's not to your liking, But it can be used it. in a very evil way. In other words, someone may get cancer and her or his friends will say, well, what were you doing wrong? What were you thinking that you got cancer? Sometimes yes. a cigar is just a cigar and people do get sick because they just get yes. sick and it's their time yes. to, you know. Exactly. Either get and better or die, whatever. Yes. And, and it's also, I certainly um, am not saying that there should be a blaming of the victim mm -hmm. in this case. It's really more of taking sure, a it's higher like perspective rape. of... Well, don't dress like that. You were asking for it. Yes. You know, that's and that's ridiculous. No, I'm wearing clothes. That's yeah. it. But the question to ask from this higher perspective, what the record keepers might say is, well, um, what was it in your past, maybe a past life, mm -hmm. that made you feel or made you believe that you needed to suffer a rape in this lifetime? Or maybe in another life a woman was a man who raped. It's, it's possible, it's possible, but it's again, it's what we take from this other sure, lifetime. Of course. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not the, the wheel or the stern lords of karma. And the record keepers That's a very, very third dimensional on take on karma, yes, isn't it? it is. And if, we're mm -hmm. and if we, as uh, human consciousness, the planet, if we're lifting or raising our consciousness, our vibrational level, to those that are more loving and inclusive mm -hmm. and compassionate, then um, you know we are we are going to um, we are going to transcend mm -hmm. that limited view, which, you, as you've pointed out, we are doing on we this earth. Doing. We are raising our vibration collectively and becoming. We are doing it. Yes. Yeah. Just the openness. I mean, the, the openness of of uh, your audience to mm -hmm. metaphysical concepts like this. Yes. Yes. And the and the also the other idea that I would would mention too is that um, we have so much power to change, mm -hmm. to change ourselves, to change our world. Because by changing internally, then we of course change what manifests externally. You can only change yourself. You can't change yes. others. But if a lot of us change ourselves, we've yes. changed a lot. Yes. And we can uh, we can change past lifetimes, as I've talked about on other shows. Mm -hmm. And the record keepers give information to, um, or through me, give information. And they also um, ask me to be the conduit for healing energies. And I'm holding out my hands like this because I'm also a Reiki master, and mm -hmm. and, and I think that's why they they ask me to do this. And as you know, you gave me Reiki over the telephone and cured my lifelong lower backache, which, by the way, came from my lover 2,000 <laughs> years ago <laughs> the, stabbing the me. Stabbed and you. Yes. yes, exactly. So I'm, I'm very happy Talk to be Talk about the intimacy problems. <laughs> 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 that could, that could sure, yeah, scare you off. Um, so I could give an example of uh, a recent reading that I did for a man who uh, was asking about a physical condition. I know. It, it, are we running out of time? Yes. Okay, make it very short. Um, he was ash asking me about asking the record keepers about insights into neuropathy in his legs, a uh, neurological disorder which he experienced as burning and numbness. What happened? How did that? Let's the record keepers. Because I want to ask other okay, questions. Okay, the record keepers gave him a past life where um, he had been in a fatal accident in a foundry back in England mm -hmm. during the, the um, Industrial Revolution, and he had fallen, broken his legs, and, and, and gotten severely burned and then mm -hmm. died. And they gave a lot of information about the issues that contributed to that. There were family issues, um, there were issues of, of him feeling guilty, him being the sole support of his family, him having to give up uh, 
his desire to study music in order to work in a fat in, but that in was a not factory. Unusual in those things. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was not unusual at all. But what was important was that um, you know, the, by getting the information about this lifetime, mm -hmm. he understood the choices and released the guilt and, and self-judgment. And his legs were no longer burning because he understood where that was coming from and he was in effect cured. Well, he said that uh, I had a chance to do another session for him and he said that um, he said that he had seen a significant improvement in okay. that particular condition, not totally cured, but um, Mainly because he's in the habit of having that pain and would miss it if it went away in a funny kind of way. Yes, or he's still working on it because healing is a process. Who too. are the record keepers? Are they former human beings who perfected themselves? Are they people who have never lived on this earth? Who are they? The 11th dimension the record right. keepers. They are, and, and I just got this, this information, they are, they've never incarnated in the earth. They are mm -hmm. pure energy beings. And they are ones who were the group, part of the group of souls that set up the Akashic Records. When, and they set it up, there was a group of souls who created the earth and they set up the Akashic Records when the earth coalesced into consciousness. Mm -hmm. And some of those souls became record keepers, some of those souls um, set up the Akashic Records as a way to help humanity. Let me ask you a question out of left field. Is there a land, Shambhala, in Tibet, an underground land that is beautiful and perfect? And if so, is that where the Comte Saint-Germain comes from? I don't know. Okay. I do not know. I could ask the record keepers, but Please at do. a later point, okay. and we can bring it up again. Um, so now, uh, if people want to talk to you more about metaphysics, about karma, about the record keepers, about the Akashic Records, and how they pertain to their own lives, how can they contact you? My website is sylviachapel.net, S-Y-L-V-I-A-C-H-A-P-P-E-L-L -L dot N-E-T. And my phone number is 347-564-5600. Uh, if, will the world, 100 years from now, will the world be a better, much better place? Because, uh, all right, this is, we're shooting this in 2014, late, well, mid-2014. Mm -hmm. If in 1964, and I was alive then, and I would... I was alive then, too. Okay. So, uh, so much of what we now take for granted, gay rights, for example, um, all sorts of things, uh, talking about metaphysics on television and computers, all these things were absolutely undreamed of in those days. Well, computers existed, but everything else, any, you know, mm -hmm. progressive thought was uh, not usual in those days. We have progressed a great deal in many ways mm -hmm. in 50 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Given our current state of liberalism, for want of a better term, does this imply that we will be much, much, much better in another 50, in another 100, in another 200? Interesting question. My sense of it is that um, It'll be a better world, a much better world, perhaps even a golden age, as some, as some mm -hmm. metaphysicians are speaking of. A better world for those of us who release our baggage so that we can ascend with the earth mm -hmm. into, through the fourth dimension, into the fifth dimension. Which is, in effect, the real rapture, as opposed to a physical, whoop, get right. up there. Or a separation of someone yeah. being judged and someone someone being judged. Okay, right, lambs over here, judged. goats over there. That's never made sense to me. However, people who are really stuck in the, um, in a third dimensional existence, and the... Um, Will they become discarded making entities in the Well, future? I'm not really sure. Um, but what I've heard that makes a lot of sense is that we'll all have a choice. People who want to stick with the um, being very selfish in their outlook and not and we've always had that choice. We since the dawn have. of time. Yeah, I think that with the Earth actually transitioning into that higher realm or higher dimensions, mm -hmm. um, 
people will another with planet take the place of the Earth as a third dimensional world? It's highly possible, or there will be, or there will be the choice. You know, you can you can ascend to this Earth and learn that people are all one, and we're not separate, and we love and need love and compassion. Right. Or if you want to stay with this uh, this selfishness, here's this planet over here, and you know, here's the bus that's leaving. So. I think everyone will have a choice. But the people going to the other planet will think, yeah, those idiots. Come on, let's go party. All right. Yeah, they'll say, oh, thank God they're gone. Yeah, really. You know, thank and you. the people who ascend will probably, um, in many cases, not even realize that they've ascended because it will be innate and natural yes. to them not to be yes. monsters, you know. <laughs> Yes. Well, and if we're all creating our worlds with our thoughts, mm -hmm. the, the more loving and compassionate and, yes. and forgiving thoughts that we think, then that's the world that, that coalesces around us. Yes, yes. Um, hopefully economic inequality. Uh, if, w if we weren't on the money system, it wouldn't matter, but we are. And so, you know, people do that. That's sad, you know. Well, that system is, um, I think the systems of control and the systems mm -hmm. of limitation, um, this is what I've gotten from the record keepers, that uh, those who would exploit and enslave humanity for their own purposes, um, the phrase they used was that they're leaving this plane, they're leaving it in droves. And going elsewhere to and a lower plane? And going elsewhere to where they're more comfortable and, and with hope that in time they'll be able to see a more compassionate way. I hope and pray that we don't reincarnate in their world. We we wouldn't because uh, we wouldn't vibrationally. We would, it would just be incompatible vibration. But don't we sometimes take two steps forward, one step back? It's it's possible. It's possible. But once you invite in love, you change everything. Okay. And on that note, I'm inviting in love. But sadly, we have to say <laughs> goodbye. My guest has been the wonderful, brilliant Miss Sylvia Chapel, past life regressionist, metaphysician, and Akashic Record expert. I'm Diana Montfort. This has been the Diana Montfort Show. You know how much I love you. Even if no one else loves you, I love you. And I'm sure a lot of entities love you too. So I love you a lot. And I'll see you next time. And take really good care of yourself. Mm. Bye. <laughs>